My next story serves as proof that it takes just one action to change a life. You may have seen this story on some of your news feeds. Christy and Kelly We Met have been through more than most can even imagine as parents. Two of their three children were diagnosed with primary hyperoxylaria type 1. I'd never heard of that. I'm sure you have not either. But it is a life-threatening genetic condition that affects three people per million in the United States. It is extremely rare, but it is life-threatening. And after years of fighting to find treatment, they found strength in their ability to advocate for their children. And they made a vow to never let another person go through what they did alone if there was something they could do about it. After years of seeking answers for their two children, Christy and Kelly we met realized they could use that same drive to be the voice for others all over the world. I put a post on one of my social media support group pages and Govinda was one of the people who responded. Govinda and his wife Mira were just two months into their marriage when they found out that he had PH1. They were over 7,000 miles away in Chituan, Nepal, and running out of options. I started communicating almost on a daily basis. We quickly learned that the outlook for Govinda in Nepal was not good. Govinda made it clear that staying in Nepal would be a death sentence. Christy knew she needed to act fast and devised a plan with her husband to save his life. The idea came that Govinda could come here and be treated. It was never a question of should we do this. I just told him, I said, uh, God's put it in my heart. One year from Govinda's initial outreach, they successfully secured visas for the couple, moving them into their home so he could get the treatment he so desperately needed. Christy, please give us the rays of hope to survive. I'm feeling blessed. Now, they're facing the unknown as one big family. We will make sure that he gets the best care that's available and that he will have everything that he needs to live a long, happy, healthy life. Joining the TAM fam from Antioch, California, please welcome Christy and Kelly We met. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Christy, let me start with asking you about um, primary hyper oxalaria type one. How did that impact the quality of life your children were living? Um, yeah, every patient presents differently. And when our oldest child was diagnosed, they had kidney stones at three years old and they were very painful. They're struggling to pass them on their own, sometimes needing surgery. But when our youngest was born, uh, he went into kidney failure at five months old. Oh. So it really threw us for a loop. We weren't sure what to expect. We were overwhelmed. And almost everywhere we went, nobody knew what this disease was. Mm. Nobody, uh, there was no treatment. There was no cure. When it gets to the point where Matthew was, the only treatment at that point is dialysis six days a week and a liver and kidney transplant. Oh, my goodness. The, the only thing that we can have the kids do in the meantime before going into kidney failure is drink a lot of water. You face this so bravely as a couple, as a family. And one of the messages from your story, um, Christy, was really about advocating for your children, knocking on doors, demanding answers. We talk so much about being your own advocate in the room. You had to do that for your children. So now you're being mom, comforter of your kids, but also mama bear who wants some answers here. And that's what you did. Yeah, we really had to learn to advocate and what that meant. When the only response from some of the medical field was wait and see, mm -hmm. that didn't work for our son. I knew that for our oldest child, at any moment, they can go into kidney failure. Mm -hmm. And waiting and see, that just didn't work for us. So we were able to educate ourselves and to really push forward to try to find as much information as we could. Uh, there was talk of some treatment that was being made available. So we just really did what we could. We partnered with an organization called OHF, mm. Oxalosis and Hypoxaluria Foundation, and they really helped connect us with people who taught me how to advocate. Mm. There's a lot of feeling of helplessness when you're just told to wait. Yeah. And as a mother, you can't do that when your child is suffering. That's not acceptable. That is so not while we an were waiting, not an exactly. Uh, while we were waiting, I was learning how to. Um, 
how to really push things forward and how to speak to legislature, how to work with rare disease communities. And along the way, we realized by connecting and networking with other people, we really able to help others as well. So we just decided that there's no way we're going to let anybody else go through what we went through if we can avoid that. Kelly, it's so beautiful because you and Christy make this pledge, right? You, you help your own children, and then, Kelly, you as a family say, we're going to make a pledge to help other people. Little did you know the person that you would end up helping would be 7,000 miles away. You think, okay, the neighbor might want a cup of sugar. Maybe somebody, you know, in my neighborhood, 7,000 miles away came someone who needed you. What did it feel like? to start that conversation knowing that you would be able to help Govinda? Well, Christy brought me the idea um, and how passionate she was about it. Mm. It really wasn't a question of should we? We knew we should help, but it was could we? Yeah. And we sat and talked for a while, and we worked out the logistics, and we decided we could make it happen. Uh, but it's not as easy as it sounds when you're dealing with 7,000 miles away. Um, but after the family discussion, we decided we'd go through it. And after some hoops and some immigration and some paperwork and a lot of waiting and a lot of praying, um, we realized that we could get him here. And, and in no uncertain terms, we could save his life. Oh. At least give it the best shot we could. So we made it happen. Oh, you got me a little misty out here, Kelly and Christy. Next up, guess what, Tam Fam? We're going to meet Govinda and his wife, Mira, and the rest of this remarkable family after the break. We are back with Christy and Kelly We Met, whose story so many of us saw after they stepped up for a stranger in need and really are fighting to save his life. They're joined now by their children. We've got Matthew, who's 11, Patrick, who is 16, Carswell, who's 19, Govinda is with us, and his wife, Mira. That is one big happy family of people together. Um, thank you all for... Govinda, how are you feeling? I'm feeling blessed. Oh, Mira. Because I'm here. Because you're there. Yeah, I had no any hope in the Nepal. No any proper care and treatment. Kelly, you said if he weren't here with you all, we know from what Mira has shared as well that the man we're sitting here likely, look, sitting here seeing, likely would not be alive, Kelly, if you hadn't got him um, to the United States. Yeah, we were struggling with trying to get him the proper care. In Nepal, he was only able to get dialysis two days a week. And this disease at the stage he's at need dialysis uh, four to six days a week. He also wasn't able to get medication that you need when you're in kidney failure. Um, but here we've been able to get him proper medication, get him on dialysis four days a week. Yeah. And we've even been able to get him the investigational medication from Discerna that uh, Carswell is also on, which is um, really helping improve their life a lot. It was medication that wasn't available in Matthews. Mira, let me ask you, Mira, knowing that your husband um, is getting help from a family who was 7,000 miles away from where you were, could you have ever imagined such kindness would come your way? That I never met the such kind and pure-hearted person in my life. I feel that day when she offered her to come to the USA, that she give me, she give both of us a ray of hope to survive. Mm. We had married four years ago. After two months getting married, this disease happened to the Govinda. Yeah. Suddenly, it stops lightning to me mm. that we both have a dream. It's okay. To start the new beginning of life. Yeah. That our dream was completely broken as a flower space. That we had never imagined that this thing happened in our life. Yeah. When your beloved one, close one, was suffering from such kind of disease, 
a condition that makes so much hopeless helpless to the close one person yeah. that we have no much hope to survive that the christian gives my husband as a new hope of life yeah you said this family is giving you a new hope for life. Christy, right now, Matthew, your child, Carswell, your child, and Govinda, your new family member, if you will, are all still in need of organ transplants. This is still ongoing. I don't want, as, as, as inspiring as it is, um, Christy, it's still ongoing right now for you all, all three of them. It is. Uh, Matthew had a liver and kidney transplant when he was two years old back in 2013. His liver is doing great, but his kidney, because of the disease that he had, his kidney took a hit and he is now on dialysis for the past year waiting for a kidney transplant. Mm. Carswell has been on dialysis for two years and because of the medication they're taking that's helping the disease, we are now listing them only for a kidney, not a liver and kidney. Yeah. And Govinda is in the process of getting put on the transplant list as well. Uh, we have him listed for liver and kidney, but if the medication continues to work, he'll only need a kidney as well. As long as we can keep him here. They don't do transplants. Um, they don't do transplants like this in the fall. So we're doing what we can to try to keep them here. Carswell, um, first of all, how are you feeling? Doing good. You're doing good. How does it feel to have such awesome parents? I mean, your parents are superheroes, basically. Did you know that? I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I'm so incredibly proud of my family and particularly my parents. Um, when they told me, like, we're going to have new family members, um, all I could think is that all our lives, we surrounded ourselves in advocacy, mm. whether for organ donation or the disease, um, primary hyperoxylaria. Um, there has never been a part of my life where my parents stopped to take a breather. They've always been fighting for me, for Matthew, for people of our community, um, for organ donation, for blood drives. And having Govinda and Mary here is proof that our advocacy works yeah. and that they're the most impressive people I could ever know. Oh my God. <laughs> listen. Oh, I know, I, you listen. Yeah, Christy, I saw you reach out and touch her because I know that just has to just melt your heart. Matthew, are you the cutest thing it, I've ever seen? Look how adorable you are. How are you feeling? Oh, <laughs> how are you feeling? Good. You look adorable. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think of your parents reaching out to help Govinda? Well... I'm just astonished on how amazing my mom is and how just and how she doesn't give up no matter what happens. Oh she just keeps on going. 